What's cooking in that game plan? But honestly, how will you yeah. approach this game? Well, we're going to approach this game really in very general, and I don't mean to be two coaches speak, but we got a very young football team. And what we're looking to do is execute at a really high level, play extremely fast, and look to improve. And, guys, I understand that you're going to say, boy, what a BS coaching answer that that is. But that's the truth of it. We, we certainly want to be efficient and physical in the run game. We want to create completions and get the ball in our playmakers' hands. How do you feel about the way that Pastore and Lion Gang were able to push some of the quote-unquote first group? Yeah, I think that both of them have pushed the first group extremely well and you look primarily to Andrew Line Gang from an offensive line standpoint and the versatility that he has is I believe that he's pushing everyone within that offensive line group and I've been very pleased with his play. John having the ability to play a little bit of the left side, a little bit of the right side as well um, has been very beneficial too. How important is that versatility for you guys along the offensive line and how much does it help you as we get to I guess later in the season? As well? Yeah and certainly you hope to use that depth at your own discretion, not because of what your needs are. But we all know as you go through the course of a season and having that depth and having that competition um, is extremely important. And I've said it before, we, we've been very fortunate the previous two years of having not only great experience, but also a lot of depth. And I think our depth has improved over the course of the last four and a half weeks. Is it where it has been the previous two years? Probably not. So over the course of the next so many weeks and where we're at today is this is a long football season. We got to continue to push the envelope. You guys played Avery quite a bit in the second half of the very first game. Could you see yourself doing that with any of the backups this time around? We'll see how the game plays out, you know. And that's that's the reality of it. And I, I think it'd be a mistake of me not to mention I've been on the other side. I've been an FCS coach and have had an opportunity to go play the Power Five football teams. And with Coach Kleiman's background, my, my background, some of the other coaches' background, it's certainly not something that we're sitting there going to say we are fortunate enough um, last year against Southeast Missouri that we were up a significant amount um, going into that second half that allowed us to create some of that depth and allowed us to get some of that game experience. But, you know, what, we're going to kind of play that out as we see it. In the helmet communication operation, are you comfortable mm -hmm. with where you are with that right now? Yeah, I am. And, you know, we've utilized it in Friday night settings. We utilized it through fall camp. We utilized it a little bit this past spring how that communication is going into week one. Is that going to be different in week five, week six? There's a possibility of that. And I think as we are all adapting and adjusting to the new technology of whether it's the in-helmet communication, which I know is kind of that sexy thing to talk about, but then also having the iPads and the tablets, I guess is what they're called, not iPads, uh, the tablets on the sideline and having that new technology and just kind of really getting into it this past weekend for the first time, because we just got those here 10, 11 days ago, how much that's going to change. And, and there's all these cool little tools that you can use, but what is truly functional throughout the course of a game? First time you've seen these since Camden made his announcement, I guess mm -hmm. what was your initial reaction to that and how has he settled into his new role for you guys? Well. Obviously, my heart pours out for that kid. And this has been a battle that he has had um, since roughly about this time a year ago. And he exhausted all of his options, guys. He, he really did. And what I mean by that is the, the surgery, which was a pretty invasive surgery that he went through. And um, that was pretty significant and worked his tail off to get back and subsequently, when he came back, he started having some of those same pains. Um, I know Mindy and her staff did a tremendous job of giving that young man the opportunity. Uh, when we had the, the, the conversation, we talked about 
big picture in life. And it's one of the things we talk about quite often as coaches because kids, us as adults, sometimes we can't see further than three to four inches out in front of our face and what his quality of life could be moving forward. Um, when, when he made that decision after a consultation with a physician, you know, he told me, you know, he said, Riles, I'll know if I could live with myself had I not tried. And I really appreciate him for doing that. Now, how he settled into that new role, he's going to be up with me in the press box. And he has done a phenomenal job of adjusting to this new role. And he's, his personality, you want him around. So I'm very heartbroken for the kid, but his future has changed. Um, and uh, I'm excited for what that looks like for him. Lyman was very complimentary of Braden Lofton in his presser mm -hmm. the other day. What, what have you seen from him that's impressed you? Well, what we're seeing is, in my mind, is some growth and some physicality. And you look at a lot of our tight ends that we have within our program, and for the most part, and this has been traditional within our offense for a long time, we haven't recruited in-line tight ends. We're creating length and you know recruiting athleticism. And – you know, for him to adjust to the physical aspects of playing within the Big 12 has taken a little bit of time. So, number one, uh, his physical sense of play and his urgency in playing physical, I think, has been something that has has made leaps and bounds, and I credit him for that. And then secondly, we ask a lot of the tight ends within our offense. And, and you guys, I think, can see it. Maybe somebody from the naked eye can't. But I, I truly believe, and I coached the position within this offense many years ago, and we've only added on that and always said that's probably the second toughest position from a mental standpoint to play within our offense. It takes some time, and that time has served him that now his athletic ability, in my mind, is really showing through. And when you're playing fast and you're playing confident within the schemes of it, that's where you really see a lot of the improvement, and we're seeing that out of Braden now. Coach mentioned, the, here. Coach mentioned on the coach's show last night that it, this was probably the best FCS team that you guys have faced in the years you've been here at Kansas State, and three straight conference championships. What do you see from them defensively that makes them good? Yeah, well, it's they've lost a few guys up front um, from a year ago, and you know, whether it be through graduation or through the transfer portal. But the guys that they have listed as their starters have had significant reps. In fact, it was very interesting to us. One of the guys who had significant reps got beat out by a guy who didn't play that much last year. So you're seeing a lot of depth, which, you know, having coached at that level, that's one of the things oftentimes you don't see is a lot of depth. And within the new age of college football, I believe that becomes even more challenging for FCS schools. So you look at the physicality of those guys up front, um, and then you look at the experience and physicality of the guys on the second level, and yeah, you become very impressed. It, it grabs your attention right away. And you're looking at you know linebackers who are grad transfers. You're looking at, at, at physical guys who can run. And it's it's been most definitely a challenge in game planning. And, and I know our guys are going to be ready for the challenge this Saturday night, and we're not going to make any, any bones about it. It is going to be a real good challenge. They, they moved, I think, one of their best corners. They moved to safety. You know, so it will tell you a little bit about what kind of coverage guy he is. And, uh, um, but then also what he can do within some of those run fits and from that athleticism and his physicality. And that's, I think that's a great testimony to him. Last one here, what Fitz. percentage of your playbook would you say is stuff you inherited as opposed to stuff you've put in or maybe mm -hmm. Coach Wells has put in? Yeah, and, and I've kind of, Fitzy, I, I've talked about this a little bit. A lot of the things that we have within our playbook have been in evolution, you know, for as long as I've been in this system. And, you know, so there's a lot of that, but there's nuance. And, and whether it was, you know, uh, Tim Polisek going back to 2014 within this offense and how it evolved at that point um, to Courtney Messingham in 2017 and how it evolved at that point to Colin Klein and how it continually evolved over the course of the past two years, two and a half years, to now 
um, myself in this role and with the assistance of Coach Wells and the other coaches, there is going to be some new stuff. And, and what we did and what we looked at is saying, okay, what in addition – can we bring into this offense that ultimately fits who we are and what our identity is? So could I give you a percentage? I guess I haven't dissected it um, um, that much, but uh, my daughter was telling me last night she's doing a, uh, a project on decimals. So as soon as I and, – and, and she's got to be creative with that, and I'm laying in bed with her last night, and she's asking me, and I'm like, boy, oh, boy, how do you become creative with decimals? I'm going to try to find that answer out. I think we just found what the plan is for, uh, for my daughter's fifth grade project. Get the rest of the homework. You know, there ain't no doubt. One, one other question for you. Could you Please. Do the same thing Courtney did on the first possession of his time at K-State and run like 24 guys on the field in one possession. That was kind of bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't – it, it was. You know, our personnel groupings have evolved since then. Um, the changes in the play clock rules, Fitzy, have changed since then that have made it a little bit more challenging as how hard, you know, um, that, uh, that I know. I'm, I apologize to disappoint you. I really do. Yes, I do. <laughs>